Send down your Holy Spirit, O God, to open the veil of heaven and speak to us as beloved children, so that we may hear and believe the good news of your word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. This morning we hear um, the first Sunday in the, after Epiphany is always the baptism of our Lord. And so this morning we read from the text of the Gospel according to Mark, which you may or may not know is the earliest written um, of the Gospels. In Mark, it is believed that it is Mark's theology of this moment in time. Because remember, Mark has no birth of Jesus' narrative. This is how Mark begins, with the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan, meeting John the baptizer. And so theology says that this is it. This is when the Word is truly made flesh, because Jesus takes on his ministry in this moment. I also think it's the moment where our human practice gets the first time anointed by the Holy Spirit. So what do I mean by that? We need to understand, first of all, what John was doing in the River Jordan was nothing new. Baptism was not foreign to the Jews. This is a Judaic practice for, for many centuries was, was baptism for the repentance of sins. And they even had large pools um, that they, they could go to. And just like you may have seen um, at another church where they actually have a large pool, you step into the water as the sinner and you go under and you come back out. And you have been washed and made clean. So this is not a new concept. But what John is doing in the River Jordan is calling people back out to that. Calling people to return, to repent from their sins, and to really start paying attention because God is coming. And we need to be on the lookout. This is what John is doing. So all the people are going to the River Jordan. Well, we kind of do this still today. We baptize. We bring sinners, whether they're infants or older children or teenagers or perhaps even adults. We bring you into the waters of baptism. And it is symbolic. Whether we do it as we do here in a smaller font or as it was for me when I was actually baptized, I walked into the pool, the pastor threw me back three times, <coughs> and I walked out of the pool. And in other places, they do it outside, in their lakes and in their rivers. And don't do that as often here for obvious alligator reasons. <laughs> okay? but, but it does happen. And no matter how, how you get washed, that's exactly what the waters are talking about. And in fact, every day that you wash your face, that we wash our hands, that we bathe our own selves, we can recall our own baptism. We can, in those moments, give thanks for the water of washing. Because after all, it was the waters that God spoke above, above and they created. Right? It is in these amazing waters that God has purposed the life and giving to us. We can, we can do that. But we also can recall that same anointing that happens in our baptism. Before Jesus, that anointing of the Holy Spirit was not happening. See, this is what changes. Jesus comes to the River Jordan, and something amazing and powerful happens. God speaks. God declares, this is my beloved son, of whom I am well pleased. And the Holy Spirit, as if like a dove, comes down upon Jesus. It's in that moment that the human practice of understanding, washing away our, our sins and turning, repenting means to turn away, no more sin, I'm going to turn this way to God, put the sin behind me. That's what repentance is all about. It takes that human practice of the washing and Jesus ordains it into the holy, permanently holy. That's 
the gift of our baptism. No matter how we received it or how we walked through it, that is the gift. And we need to remember that gift every day. We might not walk through the waters of a pool of baptism every day, but you are anointed afresh and anew every day. See, God had a purpose for John, and he sent him out, and he was a prophet, and he was a preacher, and a baptizing man. Jesus was given his son's purpose to call all people back to God's self. But each and every one of us, and every other person we encounter, has been given a specific purpose for their time while they're here on this earth. Most of us, I think, spend most of our lives wondering, well, what is my purpose? We'd be better off if we could help others go, what's your purpose? Stop putting ourselves first and walk together discovering that. Because we are created as beings, first and foremost. Then we're given the gift of being able to do. But our first purpose is to be. It is to be present to one another. It is to be present to our Almighty God and Father. And to the Spirit that dwells within us. To allow the Spirit time to speak to us. Then to push us forward, to go out and be about the purpose we've been given to do. So how are we going to do that? Not just as individuals, but how are we going to do that as this beloved community of St. Margaret's? How can we be people together, people of faith, and wait God's powerful speaking to us? And then what is it God is telling us we need to go out and to do together to bring God's purpose to fruition within the community. I'm not answering those questions today. <laughs> Why? I'm raising them because I really want us to become a community that's prayerful about those questions together and that we really begin to define some answers this year. Believe it or not, we're starting year three. Which is just like, whoa. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I've been here forever. And other times it really feels like I just got here, you know? But we are in year three, and everybody will tell you that that third year is like the year that things just bloom and blossom because we've spent the first two years getting to know one another, building, I hope, lasting relationships and trust with one another. Well, now it's time to get dirty <laughs> together. Get our hands dirty. Not just digging in soil together, but also praying over that soil together. God is calling us to a mighty act and a mighty purpose. It is time for our quiet little rural life to erupt, to impact our community in ways that maybe we haven't thought of before, but God is saying, go do that. You can do it. I fully believe that God has already planted the ground for us. He's putting the stones down. But now we've got to be faithful to walk them. We have to be a people of faithful prayer to do that together. To ask the hard questions, to wrestle with them together, and to come up with the answers we believe that God's Spirit is saying to us. And it's not going to be an easy task. But this is who we are. This is the work of the church. And so this morning, we're going to begin that process by together renewing our baptismal covenant with God and to each other. To <coughs> so Amen. let us pray. O oh God of heaven and earth, we gather in the name of your Son, Jesus, to hear your holy word, to be immersed in your Holy Spirit, Speak to us with grace and truth and power and pour out your love upon us so that this temple may resound with the joyful shouts of glory 
and that we may go forth to serve others through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.